Welcome, it's indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richie. Good to be with you. We have a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day, none other than Sharon Reed, host, commentator, and TYT Sports contributor extraordinaire. Top story of the day, according to a new report, troopers have been ordered to push migrant children into ponds of water, lake, the river, whatever it is, get them out of here by way of government mandate. Let's put up the picture of the guy who likely gave the damn order. Governor of Texas, Greg Abbott. Greg Abbott has transformed so many laws in the state of Texas, it basically operates like Florida, independent of everybody else's rules. Emails shared with CNN by the Texas Department of Public Safety detail a trooper medic expressing concerns to a supervisor over the inhumane treatment of migrants along the border in Eagle Pass, Texas. The trooper writes in the email that they were given orders to push the people back into the water to go to Mexico and were also ordered not to give water to the migrants. The email is a report of weekly events and operational concerns from June 24th to July 1st, while the officer worked as a trooper medic. The email was first reported by the Houston Chronicle on Monday. So let me set the scene so far. This is an officer, okay? So if anybody says we're being anti-cop or I'm being anti-police officer, no, I'm being pro-cop. I'm being pro police officer, I believe the officer. The officer created an email knowing it would become part of the public record. Why is that important? Because once it becomes part of the public record, if you know that it exists, you can request it under the Freedom of Information Act known as FOIA. And that is exactly what likely happened and may happen more. In one seven hour period, this happened last month according to the email. Two medics from the State Department of Public Safety said they treated a four year old girl, a four year old child passed out in 100 degree heat after Texas National Guard personnel decided to push the group she was in back towards Mexico. A man with a significant laceration on his leg suffered when he tried to rescue his own child from razor wire placed on a deterrence buoy in the Rio Grande. A 15 year old child with a broken leg suffered when he tried to cross the more dangerous part of the river away from the buoys. 19 year old woman trapped in the wire was having a miscarriage. Let's keep those up, keep them up. I wanna remind everyone that we have statutory law protecting migrants from this kind of treatment. We also have that statutory law upheld on March 30th. March 30th, 2023 by the United States Supreme Court saying that they all do in fact have the right of due process. Additionally, it is against the law to set booby traps anywhere in this nation. It's illegal to do so where other human beings could frequent. It's against the law. It is against the law for a governmental official to see an individual dying and not provide the reasonable amount of care expected. While we are talking about this in the context of shock and awe, it should be talked about from the AG's office or maybe even from the president's cabinet. An AG, 
an inspector, the VP, maybe the president himself, to say exactly how criminal this is. And they are launching a criminal investigation. There's more, the very next day, the very next day according to the email, the troopers got reports of a mother who had children trying to cross the river in an area without wire. The woman and one child were grabbed after being underwater for about a minute. Both were pronounced dead at the hospital. The body of the other child was recovered later. There's more. On another shift, the medics said they found about 120 people camping out, including nursing babies and other young children, exhausted, hungry, and tired. After a day when the temperature reached 108 degrees in the shade, the medics questioned an order to push them back to the river toward Mexico as they thought it was, and I quote, not the correct thing to do. And one that could have led to a risk of them drowning. They were told to leave the area, the trooper wrote in the email. The trooper medics contacted their superiors while on duty and again in writing calling for changes to the latest Operation Lone Star policies brought in by who? The man I just showed you, Governor Greg Abbott of Texas. I believe we have stepped over a line into the inhumane. We need to operate it correctly in the eyes of God, the trooper said. We need to operate it correctly in the eyes of God. We need to recognize that these are people who are made in the image of God and need to be treated as such. In the email, the trooper also voices concerns over what they call the casualty wire. It's a booby trap and it's illegal. The casualty wire needs to provide protection to the state and provide a safe means of travel on solid land to proper collection points. The wire also needs to be manned and patrolled constantly to provide security for these families who are seeking refuge, which is a legal, a legal standard in this country. The wire on the shore needs to be lighted at night so people can see the wire and not stumble into its, its trap. The wire barrels in the river needs to be taken out as this is nothing, nothing but an inhumane trap in high water and low visibility, the trooper writes. In a separate email, also shared by DPS, South Texas DPS Director Victor Escalon writes to agency officials saying troopers should be, should open the wire to help when necessary. There's more. As we enforce state law, we may need to open the wire to aid individuals in medical distress maintain the peace and or make an arrest for criminal trespass, criminal mischief, acts of violence or other state crimes, Escalon wrote. When asked about troopers being told to push migrants back into the water or denied water, they told CNN the office of the inspector general is investigating that incident. Well, you just admitted there's an incident by saying you are investigating the incident. Let me highlight a couple of nuances here. Massive cause and effect. Why are they coming here and risking everything, knowing who they will face while attempting to cross the Texas border? It is because of economic inequity that we as a nation benefit from. They are coming here for work. A better opportunity. 98% of those who come to this nation undocumented come to work, which also means that there are employers who are willing to hire them. The same law that makes it illegal to work without documentation. The subsection of that law also says it is illegal to hire individuals without said documentation. But you never see the manager, the hiring director, the human resource officer, 
the CEO, the CFO, the COO get arrested in the scheme. It's only individuals who are poor and brown. Let me also say this, thank you to the trooper. Even if, for those who are watching, even if you're not a religious person, a spiritual person, understand what the man was saying in the email. He said, these people are made in the image of God. What he was saying is, they are equal to us. I am equal to them. That's what he was saying. I'm not sure who this person is, but we need more like you. Share thoughts. Well, we're learning some things, Dr. Ritchie, and I share the pain here. I don't understand why that's the issue. We're learning that there are still good people who are willing to risk things and speak up. If I had put up this razor wire along my property, and by the way, I'd be required to put signage up in Espanol if that's warranted as well to warn people. And I would be held responsible if it posed a risk. So I guess I'm wondering why the wire is still up, the barrels are still in place. I don't have a PhD in the field, but I also think it's necessary to work up a psychological panel on Greg Abbott. It's more than just me. Why are you like this? Who who hurt you so badly that you are this vicious? Yeah, it's horrible. We will bring you updates, they're guaranteed to be there. All right, Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene is losing favor with, yep, Republicans ironically. And the campaign with the Biden administration got some getting back. Here it is. Lyndon B. Johnson is very similar to Joe Biden. How are they the same? They're both Democrat socialists. Lyndon B. Johnson was the majority leader in the Senate. Does that sound familiar? He was vice president to Kennedy. Joe was vice president to Obama. He was appointed as the president after JFK was assassinated, then he was elected. His big socialist programs were the Great Society. The Great Society were big government programs to address education, medical care, urban problems, rural poverty, transportation, Medicare, Medicaid, food stamps, and welfare the Office of Economic Opportunity, and big labor and labor unions. Now, LBJ had the Great Society, but Joe Biden had Build Back Better, and he still is working on it. The largest public investment in social infrastructure and environmental programs that is actually finishing what FDR started, that LBJ expanded on, and Joe Biden is attempting to complete. Socialism. Meanwhile, we are now $32 trillion in debt with record high homelessness, 40 year record inflation. We're losing the US dollar as the number one world currency. We're losing our freedoms. Our government is one big fat bloated machine and it's killing the American dream. Wow, Marjorie Taylor Greene, whoever wrote that speech for you, well, they were writing it for the White House. The White House actually decided to retweet this speech. Let's put it up. The White House Twitter account on Monday shared a speech from Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene attacking President Biden's domestic policies while at a pro Trump conference over the weekend. It says, caught us. President Biden is working to make life easier for hardworking families, wrote the White House account. The account shared the clip from Brian Tyler Cohen, a popular left-leaning commentator who captioned Green's speech. Marjorie Taylor Green warns Joe Biden to try to finish what FDR started by trying to address problems related to rural poverty, education, and medical care. She warns it's similar to when LBJ passed. Medicare and Medicaid, two of the most popular programs uh, among all individuals in the country. By sharing Green's rhetoric with its 8.7 million Twitter followers, the Biden-Harris White House 
account now offered a preview of what their 2024 re-election campaign will likely look like. Highlighting controversial figures on the right like Green. Meanwhile, per the Atlanta Journal Constitution, Brian K. Pritchard, the newly elected first vice chair of the Georgia GOP said on his online show Friday, quote, he's through, through with Green. After the Congresswoman's ongoing support for the GOP establishment at the expense of her ultra conservative allies. The conservative talk show host last month was among a group of election deniers elected to the state GOP's top leadership. Georgia state officials late last year accused Pritchard of illegally voting nine times while serving a theft and felony forgery conviction. Uh, let's put it up, Pritchard on Friday cited Green's expulsion from the right wing Freedom Caucus and an incident with Representative Laurent Boebert in which Green reportedly called Boebert a little b. For his condemnation, okay, I'm through with her, I'm through, Pritchard said. He continued, Green now says she likes being a free agent. Well, guess what Marjorie, have at it, comparing her fight with Boebert to a high school girl who went to the bathroom to smoke, end quote. Green's comment in support of the debt limit deal in which she said that unlike some of her ultra conservative allies, she doesn't live in a conservative fantasy land, angered Pritchard, the AJC reports. If you're a member of Congress voted against the debt ceiling, everything coming out of this woman's mouth is a direct shot at your member of Congress, he said. Pritchard speculated that Green is moderating her stated views in order to run for the Senate in 2026. He says she turned her back on MAGA and turned her back on the people of the 14th district. I've had it, I tried, but this is it, he said. Every single thing that comes out of your mouth is an attack on my congressman. Who do you think you are? End quote. Um, isn't that a beautiful thing? It is a beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen. This is the great implosion of all of the insanity that they have promoted and spewed to you. They are now spewing to each other. I need you to encourage this kind of behavior. I need you to continue to support Republicans who do not support Republicans. All right, Sharon, I love it. I do too, I rather enjoyed it. Um, it's better than some of the soaps, particularly with the yep. writer's strike and everything going on, Dr. Ritchie. I know why uh, some on a, a certain end of the political spectrum lie and do the shenanigans that they do because it's really not a fair fight. It's just, it's really, it's actually not a fair fight at this point. They have to do something devious. It's like, have you ever seen an adult who argues with a toddler? Which one in the argument lacks common sense? That's right, that's right. They say never argue with a fool because they will always <laughs> beat you with their experience. That's right, yes. Okay. A woman hailed, this is one of those stories that doesn't make sense. Two months ongoing in Dubai, it's supposed to be a beautiful place, a place of, you know, Tourism. And Clarence Thomas. Let's put it up full mass. Tierra Young Allen, a black American woman on vacation in Dubai, was detained and charged with screaming in public. She has been stuck there for two months now. Yes, screaming in public, you heard me correctly. Alan's mother, let's put her up. Miss Baxter said that her daughter was in a friend's rental car when they got into an accident in Dubai. When Alan went to the rental car company to get her ID, credit card and other items left in the rental car after the accident. According to Miss Baxter, that's when things escalated. Quote, she found out she could only receive those items if she paid an undisclosed amount of money. She dealt with a very aggressive individual, a young man there who was screaming at her, she told Fox 26, adding that led her 29 year old daughter to raise a voice. Authorities in Dubai have taken Alan's passport and placed her under a travel ban while investigating the incident. 
So the family is obviously terrified, I would be too. Baxter said the situation is frightening. And as time goes on, Allen is being is beginning to realize the severity of her situation. The longer she's been there, the more reality has started to kick in, she told Fox 26. She also told Fox 26, the ordeal has been very emotional. There are some days I stay up all night crying. Facts are shared while holding holding back tears. Uh, let's put up the community activist. Um, Cunell X explained to Fox 26 that Dubai has, and I quote, a strict law system that is really based on theocracy. And laws, laws and customs are very different. She is in jail for one reason and one reason alone. She raised her voice. In that country, a female is not even allowed to raise her voice. If she raises her voice, it is punishable by jail time, in quote. That's what he said. He also believes Allen doesn't deserve to be prosecuted for yelling at the car company's employee. Quote, in our opinion, she did not commit a crime. Don't punish women for doing the same thing a man can do in Dubai. It's not fair and it's not right. I've reached out to Dubai consulate. I've reached out to the American consulate there in Dubai. He told Fox 26, Allen has an attorney in Dubai who has notified her she may be sentenced to jail time thanks to a video of the incident. Let's put her picture back up again. This is why it's important to have a strong state department with a strong consulate office and strong ties to world leaders. Unfortunately, we as a nation, we have become more exclusionary in our diplomatic doctrine, which weakens our ability to save a person like her from the insanity of what you have been presented with. We hope that there's a remedy very soon. We will make sure this is spotlighted as it should be. Sharon, this is so damn sad. And I can't imagine her responsibilities back at home and being stuck somewhere for months. Yeah, it's the domino effect here, but yeah. we gotta get her out of there. Yeah, She's got to get home and there are so many people who are tempted to say, well, you should know the rituals, the rules, the laws of the country where you're going. And I, I agree with that, but it's so far out of the norm of what <laughs> we aspire to yeah. in this country that, you know, it is what it is, and you're right. right about the State Department. They gotta get her home. They now. gotta get her home. They gotta get her home. All right, we will bring you an update as this story develops. Um, we really hope that there's a remedy very soon. Um, individuals who are traveling to Dubai, uh, please reconsider until they respect the rights of women. Period. We got more on the other side. It's indisputable stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We got a lot of show left. Let me do this. I want to highlight the progress report. If you have not subscribed, let's get it done. TYT's weekday morning newsletter, the progress report. Every morning, we give you the best progressive news, analysis, and reporting. Scan the QR code or go to tyt.com forward slash newsletter to sign up. A lot of comments, thank you in advance. Lynn says, Abbott's disability has nothing to do with a wheelchair, rather he has no heart. There you go, uh, thank you for this. Ah, Regine, thank you. Reposting this because I can't type it again. And Dr. Richard might wanna hear it, sorry for the F-bombs doc. Can't be helped when this subject comes up. My God, my godson came up here across the effing river. And every time I think that some a-hole could have done something like this, to that sweet then four year old kid who I love like he's mom, makes me so angry, I can't help but cry. His little brother didn't make it, he got caught up. He got caught up in the remain in Mexico uh, policy and then died of, preventable, of a preventable illness, he was three. All of this makes me so effing furious, I can hardly contain it. Thank you for sharing that. Wolf Dragon Donna, I sincerely hope the DOJ takes prompt action. Abbott is so disgusting, does not deserve to be treated 
like a human being. Thank God for the brave trooper. Thank God for him. You too. Havar Ellis, shout out to Sharon for holding it down for us yesterday. People, she is doing double duty today. She always does a remarkable job. We thank you, Sharon. Sammy Armani, this is a drop in the bucket for what's going on at the border. You are correct. Grumpy Cat, Abbott should be charged with crimes against humanity, he should be. RJO Network, what's even worse is that his orders were followed. It's a very good point until one person stepped up. C. Michael Henson, thank you, C. Michael. Sharon hit the nail on the head about Greg Abbott. Who hurt him? Someone had to have hurt him. Hurt people, hurt people. Yep. And also, thank you again, C. Michael. Wait, what? Is Marjorie Taylor Greene leaning to the left? Would we even want her, or is she simply trying to sabotage her enemies in her own party? Um, she's just a confused soul, like all the rest of them. That's all. It comes across as, um, you know, chaos. Because it comes from chaos. All right, got something for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a Sunday? You're going to feel free. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. The best way to fight against these rogue brands is with our wallets. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's why I use the Beams app when I do my grocery shopping. Okay, this has a very poor rating, so we definitely are gonna be putting this back. But look at all the other ice creams in the store that have great ratings. We have Bluebell, we have Dryers, Telemuk, Blue Bunny, Halo Top, even Baskin Robbins. So let's go pick up some ice cream that supports our values. All right, now on to the next item on my list. Next on my list are tampons. Let's see what rating Tampax has. So they have a very low rating, but it shows that Playtex has a much better rating. Playtex does make an organic cotton tampon, which is a lot better. See how simple value-based shopping is? I'm so glad someone came up with this app. It makes value-based shopping so simple. Value-based shopping anti-woke products. Now, I need these products that she mentioned to make a statement this week. Or I'm going to simply assume that you all are proud of the new label that has been deemed upon you as anti-woke, which really is a parallel phrase for them to mean anti-black. So understand what I'm saying to you now. Make a statement this week. Let us know if you're actually anti-woke. Wokeism has become this catch-all to include, well, number one, anything that's pro-black. Black Lives Matter, diversity and inclusion programs, that helps black people. Scholarships for minorities, mm, that's woke. And then it morphed into other things like You believe in science, the environment, global warming, that's wokeism. All of these things catch on. Why are they doing this? Because they're branding it. They are masters at branding. This is not a substantive argument, it's a ridiculous argument. What they have done with mastery is they have learned that their people are really responsive to brands. Lock Her Up was a brand. Sleepy Joe was a brand. Make America Great Again, that is a brand. They are just fascinated with brands. Donald Trump is a brand, not a president. It is ironic, however, that the same individuals who are now pro value shopping were once saying, we don't want values to be part of how we judge companies. Let's put it up. Yeah, this article here, just a snippet, Republican leaders called the business world's recognition of climate science. Climate science, a symptom of wokeism. In a white paper released, the Republican minority on the Senate Committee on Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs recently called out the big three firms, BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street as our new emperors 
taking issue with their involvement in a non-binding coalition that supports reaching a portfolio of net zero emissions by 2050. Who cares about breathing? The irony of this is they literally had hearings, investigations about companies who were engaged in a values dynamic. They didn't like it, they said it was wrong. Now they are building apps and making commercials about values based shopping as long as the value is anti black, I mean anti woke. There you have it, your new America. Sharon thoughts here. Well, I thought it was a parody at first, but I understand and respect your crack investigative team. It's real. <laughs> This is real. I then thought of Elle Woods, Dr. Richie. Remember her from Legally Blonde, the bubbly, yes. reported dits. Uh, but the, the thing is, Elle had redeeming qualities. She evolved in someone who became a feminist hero, who gave voice to the voiceless. This app is for those who wish to follow blindly, and they should get a history lesson in how that works out, how that ultimately works out. Yeah. Well, Definitely, you know, spinoffs are coming. Mm. Okay. Um, would you believe a black male gets pulled over for going 65 in a 70? Here it is. I'm trying to understand what the warning is for. It's for traveling under the speed limit, okay? Well, how, far, how, how you fast are you is, What you say is kind of suspicious to travel under the speed limit when the well, speed limit is 70. Well, from my Sir, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, listen, I'm not going to argue. I got stuff to do, okay? I, have I, a good I, I day. I did too when you stopped hey. me, so I'm trying to hey. understand. I'm trying have to, a good so morning. I don't make the same infraction. I'm trying to understand it. Okay. Continue on with your day. Continue on with your day. I'm going to show you how this encounter started. Here it is. Good morning. Hey, how are you, sir? Deputy Snell with the Sampson County Sheriff's Office. You got your license and registration on you? I do. May I ask what the stop is for, sir? I'll let you know as soon as you uh, give me your ID. You, who you work for there? Your your shirt. Delmar Oil Company. Delmar Oil Company. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. How long you been there? May I ask why that is? Well, I'm just talking to him. I see your shirt there. I'm just asking. Is it is it is it wrong to ask you questions about where you work? Well, I'm just trying to figure out what that has to do with the with the stop. Okay. All right. Well, if you don't want you know just casual conversation, that's fine. Since I got, so I got you stopped here, you're driving 65, and you you know speed limit seven. I'm just wondering what's wrong. I mean, are you okay? Other than I mean, are you, I mean, you okay? I mean, you ain't traveling five miles below the speed limit. Yes, a sir. Reason. I'm just checking on you. That's all I'm doing. Okay. Yes, sir. You good? I'm great. Awesome. How are you? I'm I'm doing better than I deserve, you know. Uh, you got the uh, paperwork for the vehicle? It's actually a rental car. The only uh, paperwork that I have is via email. It's what? A rental car. I, but what were you saying about something? You said something right after that. The only paperwork they give you is uh, via email. Okay. You pull it up digitally? I can. Okay. How long you got it for? Uh, until I decide to take it back. Oh, okay. They, they don't have like a scheduled day to return it? Uh, they do, but um, unfortunately for my schedule right now, it's, um, I'm not able to. The officer continues to ask questions that have nothing to do with investigative prowess. Here it is. Where are you coming from now? Where am I coming from? Yes, sir. Goldsboro. Goldsboro, is that where the office is? I'm, I'm trying to understand what, what, what's, what's the relation what? to what? I'm trying to understand the relation to the traffic stop. Well, I'm just trying to figure out where you're coming from, where you're going, mess like that. So I have to identify where I'm traveling to and from during the traffic All stop? All right, hang tight here just a minute, buddy. I don't understand, like, what the f is going on, like. Let me, let me, let me help you, dear brother. He wants your freedom papers, because he thinks that obviously those still exist. Here's how the cop came back to the window. Yes, sir. There. This here's a warning, okay? No court date, no fine, nothing like that. You throw this paper away when you get to the house and nothing to really worry about, all right? Okay, what was the warning for? All right, have a good day, all what right? What was the warning for, sir? 
He ain't even said what a warning been for, bro. Traveling under the speed limit, okay? Well, how, how, how fast you traveling? Is what you say is kind of suspicious to travel under the speed limit when the well, speed limit is seventy. Well, from my perspective, I'm not. 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 I'm but this is a routine that happens all across America. It's happening to somebody, if not more than one person, in particular a black male right now. So let's highlight the dynamic here. The cop says at the end, is it not suspicious that you're going you know, five miles under the speed limit? Um, suspicion does not warrant a citation at all. So he admitted you should not have received a citation, sir, because there was no actual offense. A suspicion is not an offense, number one. Number two, when the officer decided to engage and ask questions that were inappropriate, already you can see that the victim was questioning, what is this about? He knew he wasn't speeding. He understood that his car was legal. Paperwork proper. He started to record because he knew it was some BS from the beginning. We do have that video to prove it. And thirdly, some people may be confused why this cop wrote a citation anyway. It tags him in their system. That's what it does. So while it has no judicial impact, it does provide a database. Uh, a database point for him and that vehicle inside of their localized system. Let's put up the picture full mass. The Sampson County Sheriff's Deputy, the Sampson County Sheriff's Office <clears throat> responded to WRAL News request for comment stating, quote, in regards to the law regarding stopping someone under the speed limit, please keep in mind an officer only needs reasonable suspicion to stop a vehicle and not probable cause. That is correct, reasonable and articulable uh, suspicion. And the driver was Anthony Perry spoke with, and the driver Anthony Perry spoke with WRAL News about the incident and how it left him feeling completely unsafe. Perry also shared how he filed a complaint with the sheriff's office, which stated they'd be reviewing the videos of the encounter. I'm glad he's speaking up for, for himself. Very good move to record that interaction because without that recording, you are simply tagged in a system you never should have been in in the first place. So big ups for you doing that. I encourage people when you feel something, record something, all right? All right, sharing thoughts here. Yeah, keep, keep it at the ready, your device there. Mr. Yeah. Perry is not safe and he absolutely did the right thing. It would have been better if this cop just showed up at the window and said, show me your papers, boy. Just like he no, said, that's what no. it was about. The only thing missing was a white witness was not required to come to the scene and vouch for him, Dr. Yep, Ritchie. That's right, like we've seen plenty of times before. All of a sudden, if a white person says, no, 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 that person actually does live in that house. Oh, Why do you just say so? No problem. No problem. All right, we got more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. All right, welcome back. We still have a lot of show left. Let me read some of these comments. Lynn says, I'm surprised anti-woke Karen isn't wearing a string of pearls while shopping. It gave me that vibe too. Uh, Civitas Vox, I think I said that right. Getting the ice cream first when you shop with an app like that. Red Housewife. If <laughs> 
If you're letting your political party determine your tampon purchase rather than absorbency, you're going to be in big trouble in about four to six hours. <laughs> that was funny. All right, Rev, do that. Habibs, for when only the most racist ice cream would do. Shaking my head. Guillermo Gonzalez was gifted a membership by Gabby Mathis. Thank you so much. And let's go to Twitch. <sighs> Dr. Hayes, it must be exhausting having to use an app to tell you how to shop like a race, racist ignoramus. <laughs> like, that's just <laughs> the insanity of it all. All right, this is an update. Remember the you know 90 plus year old black woman that they've been trying to kick out of her home, a big developer. Well, celebrities have united, put up a picture full of masks. I love it when a plan comes together. In an update, a group of black celebrities and others have come to the aid of 93 year old Josephine Wright, who is trying to fight off developers, she says, are threatening her land in Hilton Head, South Carolina. NBA star Kyrie Irving donated 40,000 to the GoFundMe. This GoFundMe was created to raise money for her legal fees. Singer Fantasia has shown her public support as well. Filmmaker Tyler Perry also shared Wright's story on Instagram saying, quote, please tell me where to show up and where you need to help and where you need to help you fight. Yeah, keep those pictures up. Now I will say this, Tyler Perry can buy all of those developers. Ain't no way in the hell they got more money than Tyler Perry. His statement helped Wright garner support from actress Gabrielle Dennis, former Food Network star Neely, gospel singer Tina Campbell, rapper Meek Mill. It's over with. The GoFundMe page currently has more than 250,000 donations. We encourage people to contribute. We have a new um, goal. It's around, I think, 350,000 once all calculations were done. So we're gonna try to make sure that we get it to that number. I encourage you to give what you can. The developer is suing Ms. Wright after a series of disputes over property line issues. A Wright's family says the litigation is intended to coerce her into selling her home. Wright's granddaughter, Sharice Graves, started the GoFundMe to help combat the legal fees. Very thankful for all of the people, including celebrities who decided to get involved. But they got involved after you got involved, after everyday people got involved. After the voice was amplified beyond the local market of Hilton Head to the national press, national media. This is affecting change, yes. Should this happen? Of course not. Should there be a policy protecting a 93 year old woman in her home from rich developers who simply want to make more money? Yes, it is a policy fix, it should be. But when there is no policy to fix it, there must be a person. I'm thankful for everybody's continued support of this woman. Sharing thoughts here. She's beautiful, yeah. I'd love her to be my grandma. She's all of our grandmas and yeah. the, the developer was short sighted, Dr. Ritchie. The developer thought this was just a simple David versus Goliath. Mm -hmm. But who is Goliath and who's David now, That's okay? Right. Didn't realize how many people would care. And I love it when evil gets interrupted. That's right. And she has such a sharp mind. Oh my goodness, her mind was so sharp. All right. NHL player allegedly called a black cop a racial slur, threatened the cop. I mean, it is insane. Put him up. According to a Scottsdale, Arizona PD report, NHL. Hockey player Alex Galchenyuk, I'm sure I said that incorrectly, I don't watch hockey, repeatedly used racial slurs toward a black officer in training and threatened to have two of them killed. Two of them killed because of a traffic stop last weekend. His actions led to the Arizona Coyotes to, to, to terminate the contract. The report said the hockey player was erratic, was aggressive, and threatening against officers. 
apparently crashing a car into a sign, but he's alive though. They didn't kill him, all right? Um, this hockey player cited connections in Moscow while saying, I'm gonna chop you, your wife, your daughter, and one phone call and you're all dead. Your whole family, your bloodline is dead, end quote. Police said in the report, the hockey player who was born in the US spent much of his time or childhood in Russia, uttered a racial slur several times while referring to the officer in training. So he was arrested on Sunday on charges of private property hit and run disorderly conduct. Failure to obey, resisting arrest and threatening or intimidating behavior, police said. It was not immediately known if he actually had an attorney. So let me give you details about a traffic stop because it was actually quite minor, comparatively speaking. According to the police report, a witness told police that a white BMW had hit a curb. It hit a curb, it hit a sign. I'm a training officer and a trainee arrived and saw the hockey player on the ground about 20 feet from the car. They watched another man put him up in the passenger seat before driving off. The officer pulled the car over, noticed the men were impaired. The hockey player became agitated and started making erratic movements and the officer asked him to you know, step out of the car. He struggled with the officer before being handcuffed with the help of the officer in training. The report said this hockey player also made threats and repeatedly uttered the racial slur as he was driven to the jail. Likely they have that in a recording. He was booked on misdemeanor charges and released the next day on his own recognizance. Um, a witness told police he was the driver when the car crashed and then got out laid on the ground. Later told officers he was joking about the threats, the report said. Now it is interesting he was only charged with misdemeanors. Naturally, they could have found some felonies to charge him with. Uh, typically, if you are um, you know, a person of color and you fight with the police, you struggle in any way, you do not get a misdemeanor charge when you take that ride, you get a felony. Now maybe you can plead it down later. But you take a ride and you get that felony and that bond will be connected to a felony charge rather than a misdemeanor. So the statement from his team says, uh, the Coyotes terminated the contract due to a material breach of terms, a day after placing him in unconditional, or unconditional waivers. We are aware of the incident and strongly condemn this type of behavior. Uh, once the club was made aware of the allegations, we immediately began the process of terminating his standard player's contract through the proper channels in conjunction with the National Hockey League. Uh, the Coyotes signed him for a one year deal for 775,000 on July 1st, uh, the opening of free agency uh, for his third stint with the team. He played 11 games uh, for the Colorado Avalanche last year, spending most of the year in the AHL. Well, damn. So racism just don't pay, sir. Just doesn't pay. Look at where you're at now. You said you were going to kill the officers who actually had a proper reason to engage with you. You said you were going to chop up their families. And you still got a misdemeanor charge after fighting them. All right. Um, even though you have lost your seven. $175,000 annual contract, sir. The fact that you are alive and able to talk is a blessing after that kind of encounter. I know some individuals who would love to be in your place right now. Sharing thoughts. Yeah, I think it's very interesting and you're right. Uh, if you wanna spew racist garbage, I guess you're gonna have to pay sometimes uh, the consequences for doing so, but he's very soft. Apparently does not have Putin on speed dial and no right. one's fearing him. He's like one of those rappers, Dr. Richie, who who tried to pretend they grew up hood. Yep. And they rap about a lot of things. And then one day somebody says, Ice, is that you? Uh, <laughs> it's just it's stop, okay? Right. Just stop yeah. it. Yeah, no authority at all. Nah. Mm -mm. All right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable sticking stuff. All right, welcome back. Good to always be with you. All right, some of these comments, they're beautiful. Jim Barclay says, this is what humanity looks like, talking about the celebrities and others who came to the aid of the 93 year old woman who was about to lose her house. And LaShawn Lewis sunk his own career. Oops, did I do that? Damn sure did. 
This is what I was thinking too. Me 2022, oh, so he was a crappy player anyway, <laughs> right? Uh, based on that, the salary model and the fact they got rid of him before an investigation, I agree. And let's go to Twitch. Octosquiddies, Octosquiddies. NHL has more accountability <laughs> than the entire LAPD. Let that sink in. That's a hell of a point, great observation. All right, a professor allegedly draws a racist drawing of a student. Put up the picture the professor drew. Look at this, look at this, of a student. Let's go back to Greg Noel, 32, 32 years of age, filed a discrimination lawsuit against Utah State in March after he felt targeted and humiliated by his own professor. Noel is now receiving a $45,000 settlement to resolve a lawsuit he filed against his alma mater earlier this year that alleged his professor continually ignored him in class and drew a racist cartoon caricature of him that was displayed in front of the entire class. I'm going to give you the background to this. According to the Salt Lake Tribune, Noel was using a computer in a lab in 2018 and the computer shorted out. The outage resulted in his work being deleted, which made Noel frustrated. He admitted to using profanities and pushed a chair. His professor was made aware of his outburst and called a one on one meeting. Now, let me remind you, he did not do this toward the professor. He did not do this at the professor, okay? He's in a computer lab. Stuff gets deleted, he may have dropped the F-bomb, all right? I've definitely done it working on a dissertation or two in my life. So it happens, let's continue. His professor was made aware of the outburst and called a one on one meeting. During the meeting, Noel says the professor accused him of being violent and questioned whether he was abusive to other people and abusive to his wife. Wow. He also asked Noel, was, was that you going full Haitian? The suit alleges, was that you going full Haitian? After the 2018 incident, Noel said the professor would purposefully ignore him during class discussions. The professor would also continually mention how much power he had over the graduate students and their careers. According to the Salt Lake Tribune, Noel reached his breaking point in 2020. He said that his white professor drew a cartoon image that Noel felt was an exaggerated picture of him as the angry black man. Put up the picture again, put it up again. That's the picture based on the allegation, right? He filed a complaint with the Office of Equity in March 2020. He did the right thing about all of his experiences with the professor. Good for you, young man. The office found the drawing was inappropriate and Noel was subjected to a hostile environment. The professor then filed an appeal with the Academic Freedom and Tenure Committee at the university. The committee overturned the initial ruling without speaking to Noel, which means there was no proper investigation. The 32 year old then decided to get a lawyer because he felt the school betrayed him and did not take his complaints seriously. What an amazing individual, thank you, thank you. There's more, Noel settlement which was approved last week, marks the fourth settlement by the university since 2018 according to our records. The school has paid out a total of $1 million for those agreements, which are funded by taxpayers, by the way. Two of the lawsuits involved cases of sexual harassment and the other was for retaliation, which is why Noel did not mention the professor's name in the lawsuit. Now, I want to, let's put up the young man again. Let's put him up because he did something quite Quite important. In standing up for himself, he has done something else as well. You see, people are taught 
how to treat you by what you allowed them to do to you. And then they will assume that they can treat people who look like you that same way. What he has now done is he has set a standard that black males won't be treated like this at this institution. Because you never know when a brother like me, being him, is on the other side of that treatment. Good for you, sir. Thank you for blazing the trail and keeping fairness intact. All right, sharing thoughts here. And thank you for not cowering under yeah. the threat of microaggressions, whoever the Ken yeah. Karen is who decided Obviously. to accuse him of being threatening because he was minding his own business and a little bit frustrated as all human beings are. It's um, the only thing though, Doc, the settlement's too low, but I, yeah. I appreciate him. But this school needs to feel it, so to speak. Yeah. And uh, I suspect this isn't the last of it. We'll We'll get more of these. Yeah, and what he's also done is by simply reading the narrative, he has provided the blueprint of what should be done when students are discriminated against by their professor. He has now given you the instructional guide. All right, good for you, man. Arizona Republican Eli Crane. Called us coloreds. <laughs> Here it is. My amendment has nothing to do with whether or not colored people or black people or anybody can serve. Okay? It has nothing to do with color Mr. Of your Speaker. skin, your, any of that stuff. What we want to what we want to preserve and maintain is the fact that our military does not become a social experiment. We want the best of the best. We want to have standards that guide who who's in what unit what they do and i'm going to tell you guys right right now the russians the chinese the iranians the north koreans they are not they are not doing this because they want the strongest military possible i Gentlemen, hope my colleagues on the other side can understand what we're doing thank you so much mr spend thing to be recognized to have the words colored gen- people. For what purposes generally seek recognition? I'd like to be recognized to have the words colored people stricken uh, from the record. I find it offensive and very inappropriate. How did the leadership respond to this? Speaking of Congressman Crane, what is your reaction to his remarks yesterday on the floor of front to African Americans as colored? I know he said that he but is that acceptable? That's not acceptable. I'll take him at his word that he misspoke. I have never heard him use that before. So you'd have to ask him about that. Unacceptable. Take him at his word. It was a mistake. He misspoke. I never heard him use it before. He typically uses the N word. <laughs> Put up the picture full mass. Representative Eli Crane, Republican out of Arizona. Said this on Thursday on the floor. It was a debate over his proposed amendment to an annual defense policy bill again, prompting a stern rebuke from the former chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. Lawmakers were debating a series of GOP backed amendments to the National Defense Authorization Act, which the House aims to pass by the end of the week, and they did. Crane said his amendment would prohibit the Defense Department from considering race gender, religion, political affiliations, or any other ideological concepts as the sole basis for recruiting, training, educating, promoting, or retention decisions. Now, there are some who will say, well, what about the diversity in the military? How many black folk actually serve in the military? We had one senator that thought all white people were, well, white nationalists, and he said, If you get rid of all white people, you're going to have a problem with the US military. Well, sir, all white people are not white nationalists. All right? Only white nationalists are white nationalists. Put up the diversity breakdown. Diversity has long been one of the military's strength, actually. 22% of enlisted armed forces members are black. 22% are black. There you have it. 
Let me tell you why it's important to know how a person thinks about a particular demographic. When he said the word colored, that meant something, okay? It's an antiquated term, obviously. It has been utilized by racist people in modern context. It was more acceptable decades ago, but more enlightened minds emerged. If he believes that it is okay to refer to any group in a derogatory manner, it is also the conscious and subconscious that guides his bias when it comes to creating policy. This is why these things are important. It gives you an understanding of the genesis of his proclaimed policy initiatives. It tells you where it comes from. All right, dear brother, thoughts here. So Speaker McCarthy said that he never heard Representative Crane use that terminology before. And I was looking at the quote again. He said colored people first. My amendment has nothing to do with whether or not colored people or black people. For somebody who doesn't use that terminology, he sure did go right forward in the beginning. That's right. And now I made the mistake of going on Twitter. It's it's a hellscape. But now there's the debate between the usage of colored people and people of color as if those are interchangeable, uh-huh. as if the year is not 2023. But yeah. here we are. This is one of those situations where you have to take into consideration the messenger as well. A cop. Arrested, accused of breaking a man's jaw, put him up full mass. His name, uh, Samuel Davis, now a former uh, police officer, North Carolina cop of Northwoods Police, is behind bars after a violent arrest made on the 4th of July. Davis, Officer Davis, was arrested and charged Monday with first degree assault, armed criminal action, kidnapping. After beating and breaking a man's jaw in a field. Now, did you hear those charges? He's been charged with kidnapping, okay? Criminal, armed criminal action, first degree assault. Put up the picture of the man he assaulted. An unarmed witness, excuse me, an unnamed witness noticed Davis's police car parked in a field. Not in Northwoods, but in neighboring Kinlack, out of his jurisdiction. The witness waited for Davis to leave before approaching the victim, calling 911 and posting this photo to social media. According to court documents, Davis arrested the victim outside of a Walgreens before prompt turning off his body count. Davis then drove to this Ken Lack field where he pepper sprayed, beat, and verbally harassed the man, telling him not to come back to Northwoods. Davis also failed to ever file a report for the arrest. Davis was apprehended in Fayette, North Carolina, where he awaits extradition to St. Louis. He will be held on the $75,000 bond. In a statement released Monday, St. Louis prosecuting attorney Wesley Bell said, and I quote, what is alleged in this incident will not be tolerated under my watch. These actions put a black eye on all law enforcement officers who are doing their jobs the right way and who are tired of their profession being dragged through the mud because of bad actions of a few. We intend to hold anyone who engages in such terrible reckless behavior accountable for their actions, regardless of their position or title. That was actually one of the strongest quotes we have heard to date. Just keeping it 100, still not strong enough for me. But it is in comparison, one of the strongest statements we've heard about a cop getting arrested. He basically said, we're gonna make an example out of him. And if you wanna act like him, we'll make an example out of you too. There's more, Um, let's put up a chief. The Northwoods chief of police, Dennis, uh, Sheriff also issued a statement on Monday saying, and I quote, words can barely to words can barely begin to express the disappointment and the failure of what appears to be a reckless disregard for humane treatment of others and the solemn duties of a law enforcement officer. This incident is directly contrary to the core values, goals, and policies of our police department and the city of Northwoods. He had a communications director write that one. Now let me say this. 
What they're not talking about is the why. Nobody's talking about the why. Why did this happen? Why did he decide to do this? Why did he engage in such, let's just say, extreme criminal behavior? And the other part is, if the witness would not have immediately approached the man who was obviously not able to help himself, would he have died? Would he have died right there? Was that the intended purpose to leave him there to die? These things must be questioned because it goes to motive. It takes assault, criminal assault or felony assault to attempted murder. Once you understand the motivation behind the action, these things are imperative to know. Share your thoughts here. It's striking that an officer was placed in cuffs and put in the back of a squad car. But there are community groups and I have a history in St. Louis area, Metro St. Louis, who are watching this one. $750,000 $750,000 cash bond yep. only. Okay, but yep. let's just see it through here because right. what's alleged is horrific. It's That's horrific. Right. And and you know this, it could be attempted murder. That yeah. You cannot take that off the table. Absolutely. Right now. Um, all right, we got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay. Let's put them up. Accused Gilgo Beach murderer had 300 guns stashed. CNN reported Monday, the accused serial killer, Rex Herman, 59, allegedly had an arsenal of of up to 300 guns stashed in a vault in the basement of his Long Island home. Not a peep from the government. Officials found between 200 and 300 firearms in a walled off vault behind a locked metal door in the basement, according to a source with knowledge of the case. The stash included pistols, revolvers, and semi-automatic rifles. He was an avid hunter, but the trove was more guns than authorities were expecting. They only knew of 92 that he had registered in the state. The search of the house in Long Island was largely focused on forensics, but authorities are also looking for items that could be souvenirs from the killings. Things that appear to be hidden or kept in such a way other family members would not have come across them according to the source. Investigators also searched a storage unit that he kept in Amityville, Long Island. Let's put up the individuals that were his victims. He was arrested and charged with the murder and the killings of three of the Gilgo Four. Sex workers whose remains were unearthed near Long Island's Gilgo Beach in 2010. The women were Melissa Bartholomew, Maureen Bernard Barnes, Amber Lynn Costello, and Megan Waterman. Kierman was pleaded, has pleaded not guilty to the killings of Melissa Bartholomew, Megan Waterman, and Amber Castillo. Uh, he also is the prime suspect in the 20 in the 2007 disappearance and killing of the fourth woman. All right, that's Maureen Bernard Barnes. According to the bail application from prosecutors, though he has not yet been charged in the case. Um, an architect by profession, he only one he had only one question during intake at the jail after being arrested, a source said to CNN. Is it in the news? Question mark. It's the only question he had. The Gilgo Four are among 11 sets of human remains that were found across Long Island South Shore between 2010 and 2011, launching what police have called, quote, one of the most consequential homicide investigations in the island's history. The County Police Commissioner Rodney Harrison, let's put him up. A former NYPD chief reopened the case when he took over as top cop at the start of last year. Quote, we found that he was an architect and some other things. And we were able to do some phone records and some background checks. And he uses his credit cards and look at his family. The police chief said, the police chief said of Herman, Herman, he has a wife and two kids and just his lifestyle. And we know, and we, excuse me, started getting closer and closer saying, hey, 
This may be our person. Police ultimately linked him to the crimes through tips from witnesses, including the pimp of one of the victims. And DNA pulled from a discarded pizza crust that tied him specifically to the scene of the crime. What a hellacious story. And there's an indication that he was about to start murdering again, 300 guns. 300 guns in his home. Our fascination with gun culture allowed this individual to fly completely under the radar of possible problematic behavior. Sharing thoughts here. Things and people are not always as they seem. So there's a lesson in that. This could be one of the most prolific serial killers. Mm. And as you said, heinous and a pimp helped yep. lead authorities to him. Um, I, I'm scared. It sends chills up my spine, Dr. Richie, to learn what's next and sure. what else he's done. And it's damn near guaranteed he's done more. Absolutely. So we will bring updates. Um, a social experiment. Um, here it is. You know, it's heartbreaking that you could show that video to somebody who says racism no longer exists and they will respond in a way to reject the very truth in front of them. You can talk to a Christian evangelical and say, do you have a problem with this video? I dare say that most of them in this era would likely not. And I remind those who are people of faith in the Christian context, it was Jesus, Yahshua, who said, will you do to the least of these, you do unto me. And so the question has always been, if it's that simple, if it's that simple, if we treat people the way we should treat Jesus, Yahshua, Whatever your faith context may be, why don't we do it? And the true answer is, we do. In our treatment of humanity is how we actually treat our faith. Sharing thoughts. Yeah, it's just painful to see and it reminds me of what we teach each other. Remember that experiment, Dr. Richie, where That's right. little girls of color were looking at Dolls in their likeness yep. and using words like dirty and uh, ugly. People aren't right. born this way. We got to take a good look at ourselves. That's right. And that's the reason we fight for intentional programs, diversity and inclusion, education opportunities, cultural awareness, because the indoctrination was intentional, which means the deconstruction of the indoctrination, indoctrination must be intentional too. That's it. Real simple. Sharon. Always a pleasure. Tell people how they can follow you, check you out. All of your great work. Pleasure's all mine. I appreciate you, Doc. Uh, TYT Sports, and join that across all social platforms at Sharon Reed Live. There it is. Until next time. All right. Remember, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.